Welcome back to Chris Builds. The next part I'm gonna attempt is the top triple clamp on this Ducati project. What's the triple clamp you ask? It's the part on the top of a motorcycle that connects the fork tubes to the steering stem. That's what I'm gonna do next. There's a lot of things I haven't done before on this. I think it's gonna be really fun. Let's get started. I've been thinking about this triple clamp for a while on the computer and on my 3D printer. So it has to solve two core problems. The first is it has to obviously function as a triple clamp. It has to sit on the bike and hold the fork tubes to the motorcycle. But I also wanted to integrate my gauge cluster. I bought a Moto Gadget M unit for this bike for my Speedo, RPM gauge, things like that. And I want to hold it in the triple clamp so it looks nice and clean. So I started iterating on the computer and I've been through a few different designs. Uh, this was the first I 3D printed and this helped me get the size and dimensions correct. This fit, but wasn't strong enough to work as a triple clamp, way too weak. So I iterated a little further and I got this. This works as a triple clamp, is strong enough, supports the M unit, solves most of the problems. But then I realized that I really wanted some indicator lights on my dashboard. So I iterated a little further and got this. And this supports the LED lights for the M unit and will give me turn signals, high beam, fuel light, stuff like that. So I was getting closer. And the whole time, I thought I was gonna get this CNC machined. That was the plan. Well, I got some quotes from a CNC machine shop and the cheapest quote I got was like $2,000. It's just way too expensive. There was no way I could do that. Uh, so I shelved the project for a little bit, thought about it some more. In the meantime, I've been getting better at machining and trying to improve my own abilities at that and came back to this and realized I might be able to do it myself. So I looked a little bit more critically at the design and realized there's, there's some features in here that would be really, really difficult on a manual mill. But if I simplify the design a little bit, I think I could do it myself. So, so now I'm here. This is my latest iteration. I simplified some of the features a bit to make it easier to execute on a manual mill. And I'm feeling pretty good that I can pull this off. So, got myself one of these. Big, massive block of aluminum. First step is to square it up on the mill, get it nice and square. Then I'm gonna blue it up, draw my design on it, and go from there. Let's get started. I've got the aluminum all squared up on the mill. So now we're ready to draw our design onto it. And uh, that took some time for sure. I uh, It's hard to get metal in the exact size that you need it. So then you have to cut it down and cut away all the parts you don't need until you're at the uh, the size it should be. I, I wish you could, you could hold this. It's a pretty remarkable object in, in itself. Just, it's very rare that you can find in, in the world a uh, chunk of aluminum that is perfectly square and rectilinear and has this kind of mass to it. It really, it feels pretty awesome in the hand. Uh, so let's add the bluing, uh, scribe some lines, and hopefully we can get started making some holes in it.
All right, so I think I'm gonna stop there. That finishes part one here. Uh, I got the part squared up, I got it glued, and I got it drafted up. So that exercise alone really helped me think about what the hard parts of this are gonna be. And I'm ready to start the next step, so stay tuned.